Blog Talk Radio. Hey, this is Anthony C. Ferrante, director of Sharknado. Hi, this is the voice of BattleBots, Mark Biro. This is Seth Shostak, senior astronomer at the SETI Institute. Hello, my name is Matt Simon. I am a science writer at Wired Magazine and author of the new book, The Wasp That Brainwashed the Caterpillar. This is Frank Joseph. I'm the author of an essay in the latest book, Lost Secrets of the Gods. Hi, this is Linda Godfrey, author of American Monsters. Hello, my name is Robert Salas. I'm the author of Unidentified, the UFO Phenomenon. Hi, this is Nick Redfern, the author of Close Encounters of the Fatal Kind. Hi, my name is Bob Luca. And my name is Betty Andreessen Luca. Hi, this is Jesse Proust, the producer of JFK, The Smoking Gun. Hello, this is Marty Langford. I'm the director of Doom, the untold story of Roger Corman's The Fantastic Four. Hi, this is Kevin Randall, author of Alien Mysteries, Conspiracies, and Cover Up. Hi, this is Tracy Roberts, fan of Positive Statistics. I'm Jeremiah Bomek, the producer of The Real of Horror. Hi, my name is Bill Hall, author of The World's Most Haunted House. Hi, this is Micah Hanks, and I'm the author of the book The Ghost Rockets. And you're listening to Emmy on the Graveyard Shift Talk Show, blogtalkradio.com. Deep within the molten core of a dying star. From the snow-capped mountaintops of Middle Earth, orbiting above the Earth in a stolen alien spacecraft. The Graveyard Shift Online Radio Talk Show. Now, strap on your seatbelt, get ready to kneel, true believers, because here's your host, Emmy. Hello out there in radio land. This is Emmy, and you are listening to the Graveyard Shift Talk Show, the greatest talk show that ever has been, is, or ever will be. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I got to tell you, I got to tell you that I'm really excited today. I'm excited because, you know, I don't know about you, but I want to talk tigers. And today we've got a very special guest on. And first of all, how can anybody like talk with that amazing southern drawl in the background? Man, Joe, you've got one hell of a singing voice, partner. Anyway, guys, today I want to share with you. Uh, or actually a live interview with Mr. Jack Warren. He's an author of an upcoming book called I Saw a Tiger. And I want to tell you a little bit about Jack before I introduce him. Jack is a former cameraman for Joe Exotic, who everyone, I hope you know who that is. It's the, you know, the guy behind the, the really insanely popular docuseries on Netflix, Tiger King. And he lived and worked on the zoo for a, a, a pretty good time period, and then he left. And he's going to talk to us about his time there. I don't want to put too much, too many words in his mouth, but um, you know, he, he it's really been interesting. I've been reading some of these things that he wrote, and um, it, the the book itself is is really it's an interesting true story that showcases the hectic and the really unscrupulous dealings behind uh, the Tiger King Joe Exotic and its zoo. And in, when you read this book, it unveils the, the mystery uh, behind the exotic animal trade and sheds light on a tale that many would prefer to be kept hidden. Um, the narrative is, is populated by thieves, con artists, drug lords, murderers, trafficking, and quite a few crackheads. So I'm really interested in this. So I'm going to go ahead and introduce him, Mr. Jack Warren. And here he is. Let's see if we can get him on the air here. Come on, guys. Let's go. Okay. Hi, Jack. How are you doing today? Doing pretty good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you. I'm doing good. I'm, uh, you know, sweating down here in Tampa. I don't know where you are. If it's hot up there, is it cold or what? I actually kind of cooled down. I'm over here in Oklahoma. We just had a hot spell about a week ago. Oh, okay. Well, wow. That sounds nice. We don't know what cold is here. We only get cold here for maybe a month or two. And, uh, you know, our version of cold is like 60. That's about it. It doesn't get any colder than that. It doesn't get any colder than that. Well, you know, Jack, um, I got to tell you, I'm really curious about this. I saw your book out and, you know, I, re- I've, of course, I've seen the documentary series. It's, it's, Really, really fascinating. And, you know, I don't think anybody knows this, but to just to, to, so people can understand 
how entrenched tigers are and, cu- and, and, and exotic animals are in our society. When I was a child, I had a neighbor that owned a tiger in my street, and I actually got to meet this tiger. And I didn't know what it yep. was at the time. You know, I just saw it was a big animal. But, you know, obviously they told me what it was. They, now, I will say they were very careful with it. They didn't let me touch it, or, you know, because they wanted to be really safe. So they were actually smart, uh, well, smart in the sense that they wouldn't let me near it. But just to give you an idea of the listeners, how many people really own these animals. Now, you actually have a very different uh, experience with them. You actually got to interact with them personally. Can you give us an idea? What made you want to write this story? And, um, of course, tell us a little bit about yourself in the process. Uh, so the, the, the book. Um, so when I left the zoo, from the day I left, um, a lot of my friends and family were like, dude, you got to, like, write these stories down because uh, the amount of insane stuff that happened while I was there. I was, about six, I was there for about six months. Um, so although it doesn't sound like a whole lot of time, we were working 14 hour shifts. So it felt like we were there for years. Um, hmm. but, um, I came back and I had all these insane stories, all the stuff that was going on. Nobody actually like truly believed me until, um, Joe was convicted and, uh, the news, it kind of hit the, the viral news down here. Um, so, um, I didn't want to quite go through with it knowing Joe. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't want to deal with him after I left. So I never actually went through and wrote it. Um, after the docu series came out, I said, "Screw it! I'm, I'm going to write this. I'm going to tell people what actually really happened there." Because the docu series, although you know a lot of crazy stuff happened there, that, that doesn't even scratch the surface. There is so much more that happened on the zoo that nobody even talks about. Hmm. So, wow. Well, I mean, I mean, that's amazing to 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 hear because they go over quite a bit. But you do get a sense that there is a lot of stuff missing because, for one thing. Um, all of that stuff that was in that one uh, building was destroyed in the fire that they're still talking about whether Joe did it himself mm-hmm. or whether it was arson. But anyway, um, we'll get to that. But I'm, I'm curious. Tell us in, what, what are some things that you saw? What was your experience working for Joe and working at the zoo? Uh, it's, it's undescribable. Joe is uh... – He's got this demeanor around people. When you first meet him, you think he's this amazing guy. Um, you get a lot of respect for the guy, and then after a week of being around him, you realize that this guy is actually pretty horrible. Um, he does really? a good bit of meth, um, and you know when he's doing it. It's, it's one of those things, if you haven't seen someone tweaking, you wouldn't know that he's on meth, but if you've been around enough people that have done drugs, you, you know. Um, so he would come in, and he would be... Uh, kind of hard to explain. He would just be super, super upset over the smallest things. He would want something done one way one day, and the next day he mm-hmm. would completely forget about it and want something completely different. Um, right. He would do these insane things. He would fire people on the spot over really stupid things. Um, he was just a really horrible person to work for. Um, wow. And then uh, as you work there and you start hearing about what Joe has done, it, he's actually – a genius. He's done. A, he worked a lot with these tigers. He was one of the uh, big people that actually uh, uh, created the ligers. He created the tull liger and the lull liger. I think there's only been three people in the world that have ever been able to do that. Um, so he's been able to breed these cats, and it's this insane theory that if you breed them back enough times, you'll actually get the saber-toothed tiger, and it actually looks like he may be re- uh, tr- uh, right about that. So mm. it's one of those things. You get a lot of respect for the guy, but at the same time, since he is technically a genius that amount of smart comes with that amount of crazy wow well and, and, and you know, give and take. yeah and you know it's funny they always say that creative types have a little bit of uh, strangeness in them and i guess the the more creative you are the stranger and crazier you get you know um so oh, did yeah. he have, i mean what, what what kind of things did you do there when you first started out uh so when i got there um i was well, before I got there, I was working uh, commercial work. I was doing some video work for different uh, small businesses and whatnot, doing mm-hmm. advertising and all that fun jazz. Uh, so um, I actually applied to the job through a Facebook post I saw online through a uh, filmmaker's forum where they'd post different job opportunities and whatnot. Um, so I went and uh, um, I got the interview the next day. I went down there. He asked me one uh, question. It was this guy, but can I do the job? I said yes, and I was hired on the spot. 
Um, so my job was I was supposed to be the cameraman for his live TV show that he did. Um, I said TV show. It was more like an Internet um, web series. Um, right. I would walk around the, the zoo with a camera, and I would film anything that I saw, whether it was with Joe or the employees and all that fun jazz. Um, mm-hmm. we also took tours or we did photos for the, the tours that we did on the, on the zoo. So anybody that was interacting with animals, we'd take photos for them and we'd sell them there as well. Um, hmm. after I was there about a month, maybe a month and a half, um, I ended up running the studio. I had about, uh, two other guys underneath me and, um, we ran through so many employees so fast. It wasn't even funny. People would quit like two, three weeks in because of Joe. Wow. Okay, that's wow. So he went through a lot. I mean, and I saw, I I did see in the documentary that people kind of came and went. There was a, there was a. I mean, the timeline. There was a period of time where he was really just getting increasingly uh, agitated because of, uh, well, you know, Carol Baskin, and um, he was just firing people left and right. But from what you tell me, yep. he was he, he was doing that from the gut from the get go. And and oh, it yeah, seems no, like so, he. Um, I got there in 2017, so uh, okay. I believe the lawsuit with Carol was 2012 or 2014, something like that. Okay. So he already had this huge hatred for Carol. They, they've been going at it before even the, the, the lawsuit because they had this kind of small war going on, which kind of led to the lawsuit. Right. Um, but, uh, yeah, he would, he would uh, either fire people or they would quit because Joe is just a horrible person to work for. Um, one of the guys you saw in the documentary, Eric uh, Cowie, he's been there for, I don't know if it was five years or ten years now. Um, and he saw so many people go through the zoo that um, any new recruit, he wouldn't remember your name until you gave him a reason to remember your name. You were known as the um, number of employees that he had seen come and go. So I was like number oh, 223. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Wow. And, I mean, just so everybody yeah. can understand, it's hard to to really see from – or to tell because of, you know, the way that they filmed it. But this zoo that he has, it's, it's massive, you know, it's, or had rather he it's, it's huge. It's, it's, I mean, if you could compare it with something or somewhere you've been, is there, can you give us an idea of scope and size? If you can, if you can give us that idea. Uh, I believe it was 14 acres. Um, wow. As for size, okay. I don't even know. You know other thing part is, is like the zoo is big. We had 210 tigers and over 80 other animals. Um, oh my gosh. Wow. But there's a big chunk of the zoo that wasn't even part of the zoo. It was kind of this back area. And we had a bunch of other animals out there like deers and um, uh, some of the tigers or other animals that have gotten sick or just getting kind of old and they, aren't, they don't look that great. So we keep them back there. So that kind of brings me to my next question. So one of the things that the document series brought up is this very sad truth that a lot of the owners of these zoos, um, they participated in, uh, well, you know, killing the tigers and killing the animals when they got to a certain age. If they decided that they mm-hmm. just weren't marketable entertainment wise, they decide, you know, they would just do it, you know, uh, probably away from prying eyes. I think I used that word incorrectly, but anyway, <laughs> um, did you ever see anything like that at Joe's zoo? Did you ever see him do this or, or see anybody do this or did he, or, or when the animals got to a certain age, did they go, did they just go to that area until they got old and died naturally? Uh, yes and no. Um, most of our older tigers that I know of, um, they, they would stick around unless they had they, they didn't look good or they weren't pretty or something or other. Um, and then Joe mm-hmm. would either – he made the uh, – gave us the impression that he was selling them. Apparently, I believe it was after his first or second crew, a uh, video crew. I was one of the last crews. Um, he stopped um, telling the, the cameraman to uh, film anything re- uh, related to him putting down a tiger. So we, I didn't hear much about it. I always thought they kind of um, were sold off. There was a day, though. Um, there was an incident where an employee got hurt around a, uh, um, I like to call them uh, tiger toddlers because they aren't full grown right. toddlers or tigers, but they weren't like uh, babies. They were like a full size dog size. Um, okay. Uh, they got hurt by one of them. So um, Joe thought he was aggressive or something or other. So he took it back to the back and was going to shoot it. And I guess mm. decided not to do it. So um, that tiger ended up living. 
but I don't know which one did get shot. I believe he did shoot one that day. Yeah. Well, and, but, but from what it sounds like, it was, it's nowhere near like what happened with the set. I forget the name of the other gentleman that, that owns that zoo down South, but um, the one that, no. that Joe kind of idolized a little bit, but okay. And, yeah. and so can, um, give us an idea. Uh, well, go ahead. You were going to say. Yeah, so Doc Antle, he would kill the uh, the baby cubs once they weren't making money. Um, Joe right, wouldn't do that. Him. He would actually sell them. Um, right, he would okay. sell them and get about three grand for each tiger cub. Right, and that actually connects to my next question. So some people – I know I know they, they touched on this in the docuseries, but just in case, again, for someone that may not know, they might think, well, how, do you, how does somebody make money in this? Because, you know, for me, before I watched this, I knew about – you know, I live in Tampa, so I know all about Big Cat Rescue. In fact, I've been there several times. And um, mm-hmm. I actually interviewed I actually interviewed Carol Baskin before when I worked at uh, Clear Channel. She, we we had, we had her, an interview with her, and I wish I still had oh, yeah. that. I would yeah I really wish I still had that because I'm I'm curious. I can't really remember the details of the interview. I think it was just a fluff piece because we didn't really know. At least I didn't know all the controversy and stuff. But uh, yeah, anyway. Um, so when people go to this. So how does he make money? So he goes, he makes money from people. To, is there an admission? And then they pay that admission. Or is it like a donation? And then they pay for cub petting and all this stuff. Can you give us a little bit of background on that? Okay. So how he makes money, um, there is an admission. Um, it's actually kind of a high admission, I believe. Um, I think it's like $15 to get in the park. Granted, this was like Five years ago, so it's could have been. I mean, it's changed now because they're technically closed. But um, right, right. I believe it was yeah, we're to get into right. the park, um, and then they had a tour, and the tour was expensive. It was like seventy-five bucks, and they would take you through the entire zoo, including areas where you couldn't go to unless you were with a uh, um, one of the uh, the zookeepers. So that way, because um, they weren't banisters in front of the cages, so technically, if you weren't if uh, someone wasn't paying attention, you could stick your arm in and get it like shoot off by a tiger or something. Um, wow. So you would go and you do that and you would interact with these animals and um, you get pet baby tigers and baby bears. And it was like 75 bucks. You also had other things like um, you could buy a CD. I think it was like $35 for the CD of the photos. Uh, you could buy a uh, single print of a photo where you're like holding the baby tiger. And then he had, um, he had a package where he would sing you happy birthday. And if you don't know, there's <laughs> Joe lip singing in those videos. He cannot no sing way. whatsoever. Oh my God! That um, is yeah, no, he, it's like nails on a chalkboard. And then we had like three people that would actually buy a CD, and they were so pissed because you can't sing, and it just sounded horrible. And they spent all this money, so they <laughs> ended up getting like a refund or something rather. <laughs> oh my God! Was, that's hilarious. Oh, it was wow. bad, Joe. I don't know what he was oh. thinking about that one, but yeah, that that was pretty bad. Um, and then <laughs> we had a gift store where you could buy like a uh, plush animals and stuff like that. That was uh, overmarked. And then we had the burger bar and you can go down and get a burger um, and some fries. And then we had a tiki bar, which is like a, uh, you can go down there and get some drinks. And then eventually okay. we open up Zooters and you can buy pizza in there as well. Okay. And I just want to make sure we clear up something. So the food that they're selling people, this is expired meat. Are we, are we, is this expired meat that we're talking? So to kind of clear that up, um, the burger barn, no, that wasn't expired meat. That was actually food that he would buy. He actually bought the food oh, okay. food stamps, which is kind of very illegal um, oh because God. we would go through so much of that meat. We didn't get really a, a hamburger meat that much on the food trucks. Now, the food truck, most of that food, especially the ones that we would serve, wasn't actually expired meat. It was meat that um, uh, when a customer goes to, like, Walmart or something, they, wanted, they decided they were going to get, like, meat and decide at the, the register they don't want to buy it. Well, the employee right. can't put that meat back on the shelf due to the FDA, so that would go on the meat truck. That's what they were giving out. It still wasn't good, but it wasn't but horrible. It wasn't – okay, so we're not talking about meat that's been gone for like a week or three days or something. We're talking about the, it may be the same day. Yeah, it just like hasn't been action. put back in the – okay. I mean it's still not – it's still not the same thing, but, you know. Okay, so at least people yeah. going to the parks ate – non they just ate regular meat okay now let me ask you this mm-hmm. um i may get a little personal here but i'm curious because they did talk about this uh apparently joe had quite a number of um uh partners and i mean did you see mm-hmm. were, did they go through all of them that you know of or did you see anyone 
that maybe he had that that they didn't mention on the docu series that you can tell us about? Like, did he have another husband? Did he have another boyfriend or or lover that they didn't mention? Okay, so to give you kind of a clear, I'm going to give you two answers to this one. Um, as for the people that he was married to when I was there, he was married to Travis and John. John had left him already um, and was married um, uh, the cashier girl. I think her name was Amber, mm-hmm. um, and they had a daughter. Um, so he was technically gone, but he would always come back and help Joe if he ever needed anything. Travis was okay. awesome. Now, here's the thing. They didn't really have sex. It wasn't much of a relationship because there wasn't any time for it. Um, they were working at least at 16 hours a day. Um, so when they go home, it was pretty much through sleeping. So that I know of, they never had sex. But who knows? Um, as for his other partners, um, Dylan came in after I was I had already left. I think he came in like two – Travis died about a month after I left. So – I think Dylan was like two months after that. So I didn't meet the guy. Um, Supposedly, I know he had one other husband beforehand who had died. I don't remember if it was cancer or hepatitis. He had died Hmm. a while back before. And I heard stories that there's actually another guy that he was married to before that. Interesting. This is all speculation. I can't actually, like, confirm any of this. But um, they had gotten in, like, a... Joe was being very manipulative because he's a very manipulative guy, and um, the guy thought that Joe was going to kill him, so he pulled a gun on him in the middle of the night and ended up leaving the park, never to be seen again. Whoa. Yikes. Yeah. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Wow. I mean, yeah, it sounded like the, the way that, yeah, it's crazy. I mean, it sounds like, holy cow. So then, okay. So let's let's talk about your involvement in this zoo a little bit. I mean, I know you were there for six months, and so did did you just do camera work? And you said that you worked when you did footage in the with the tigers. First of all, let me ask you something. Do they smell bad? Because I, I don't. Rem- I mean, the only the only experience I remember is obviously when I was a child, but I, can, I don't remember that. I mean, I remember Bush Gardens here in Tampa, and I know they smell there if we get close enough, which they don't let you, but. Do they smell bad? Elephants? I mean, what, 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 yeah. So uh, we didn't actually have any elephants. Um, we did have, like, the 210 tigers. They don't smell as long as you keep the cages clean, which you have to do. Um, right, okay. They do. Um, the males will try to – they get bored. They're in a cage. What else are you going to do? They try to – I guess it's a game to them to try to uh, hit you with pee as you're walking by. <laughs> so um, that no, that smells like microwave butter popcorn. To be honest, so it didn't smell bad, oh but gosh. it wasn't fun. Um, okay. As for the other animals, it didn't smell um, except for the chimpanzees and the monkeys. That that was just horrible. Well, yeah, I bet. I mean, because they they throw their own crap. I mean, you know, with if you get close the enough. So I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I know about the monkeys. I used to work at uh, Bush Gardens, and we had to. Uh, they had me working in the nursery and we had a chimpanzee in there and he used to throw his stuff at everybody that was there. And I was one of the people he threw stuff at. So, yeah. Um, anyway, <laughs> so, so when you're doing, so when you're doing this camera work, so you, did they show any of your footage that, that you know of, did they show any of your footage during the docu series? Cause they showed quite a bit of follow cam footage of Joe inside the cages with the, with the tigers. Mm-hmm. So do you know that's, if they, 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 um, they did. They actually about, I want to say 60 to 75% of the archived footage on the zoo that was shot by me or, wow, or really? my guys that I edited. Yeah. Oh, wow. Now, I'm not well, in the um, credits because I worked for Joe, and so Joe technically owns that footage, so he was the one that sold it. So you won't oh. find me in the credits anywhere, but yeah. So you're not getting royalties for this thing. No, but to be honest, um, from what I was hearing, I think the only person that got royalties was Rick Kirkman. Right. Okay. Everybody else okay. got shafted. So. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So then, when you were doing this stuff with Joe, I mean, how did you feel being in a cage with all those, some tigers around you? I mean, did you feel okay because Joe was there, or were you tired? Are you were you terrified and scared? Well, how, how did that feel? Uh, I'm I'm a bit of a daredevil. I like doing really stupid stuff. So. Yeah. When it came to being uh, able to be as close as I was to Tigers, like uh, on a daily basis, I was 
inches away from a tiger. Um, I would have a camera wow. lens through the, the, the gates. I would jump banisters. I would climb on top of cages. I did a lot of crazy stuff that um, I will never be able to do again in my life. And it was, it was a blast. I loved every second of it. Wow. I, I bet you did. I mean, I don't, know, I don't know how you did that, man. I would have been terrified. <laughs> I would have been like, oh, my God. Because I'm a, you know, I'm a coward. So, um, were you the one that was filming when Joe got, like, there was a part in the docu series where a tiger grabbed him by, I think he was doing a commercial for something, and I, I think, I guess he was doing a commercial for that reality show, that I forget the gentleman's mm-hmm. name. Oh my gosh, oh my memory is a guy that keep that that wanted to do a reality show on him. And then they did a, I think it was a commercial, and then a tiger grabbed him by the pants. And then um, it got to a point where, you know, I think Joe was like, okay, you know, he got really pissed at that. At like, he, I don't know, if, I don't want to say he actually shot at the tiger. I think he shot in the air or something. I may have been, I may be remembering that incorrectly. But are you, was that so, you filming that? Or can you tell us a little bit about that? No. That I know, okay. I believe Rick Kirkman shot that, or his crew did. Um, from the okay. story I've heard, um, he shot that tiger. Um, he. Uh, oh really? Yeah, he, he, he did shoot the tiger. tiger. Yeah, so the tiger's dead. Um, oh wow! Okay. But yeah, that was Rick Kirkman. He was the, I want to say the second crew he had, um, which was about I want to say three, four years before I got there. And and can you just that's wow that's really something wow, and. I know this is not necessarily the same subject sort of, but so you had a lot of people coming through that park, you know, you had people paying for the cup petting, which, you know, uh, they're, tr- they're trying so hard to get a law passed against it. And um, mm-hmm. can you tell us, like, did you ever see any celebrities or anybody famous come by and, and, and take pictures with the tigers or even buy, did you ever see anyone famous buy a tiger from him? Uh, I saw, um, Shaq, Shaq came in. He's huge. Um, yeah, he's he cool. um, he, he bought a tiger, but he didn't actually like take it home. He kind of just sponsored a tiger there. I think he actually has like three or oh, four. I see. Um, okay. And then, uh, we had like two porn stars that came in. Um, that was about it. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. I knew about Shaq owning a tiger. I didn't know that, or rather sponsoring one. And uh, I actually did meet Shaq once. Then I'm a short guy, and he thought that was hilarious. So he would put uh, his hand. He would put his hand on my head, and it's like his entire hand just fit all around my face. It was rather. It's like, what am I gonna do? Get your hand out of my face? I mean, the guy could squeeze my head like a melon for crying out loud. And I've got a really big head, yeah. so you know, yeah. So anyway, okay, that's curious. And and what I'm what I wanted to know is. When you were writing this book, you mentioned that there were things in the docu series that they didn't show. So, what are some things? Mm-hmm. And we may we may have touched on this during the interview, but what are some things that you think they should that that maybe they should have shown, or or they couldn't because they didn't have footage of it that you could tell us about? With obviously, I don't want to spoil your book, but you know, kind of give the, the 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 readers a little bit of motivation, more motivation to read it. Yeah. So. Um... The whole big point of, of the book is to kind of not only shed light on, on Joe um, and the zoo, it's mostly on um, his relationship with the employees and, more importantly, the, the employee stories. Um, about, I want to say a good 75% of the employees there were either ex-felons or they were felons on the run. Um, and they did anything from small petty crimes to, you know, like larceny or theft to big-time stuff um, like murder and uh, drug trafficking and sex trafficking. Um, three of my uh, roommates were huge. Um, they, they, they had done some stuff. Um, one of them was involved in sex uh, trafficking and prostitution. Um, the other one was involved or had just murdered a man and was on the run. Um, and the other one was a um, major drug distributor um, for, I believe it was a cartel. Um, and they did uh, a lot of the, the d- drug distribution for um, Oklahoma and the Texas area. What? Oh wow, that's yeah. amazing! Wow, okay, okay, that is crazy. So, so then, um, one moment Sorry about that. Sorry about that. I had to cough. Um, okay, so wow. Um, so then, did you? What? What about? I mean, forgive me if you don't want to talk about 
this, it's okay. I understand that, you know, the subject of Carol Baskin is a bit of a sensitive subject with anybody that's ever worked at that zoo. But did you ever encounter her? Did you did you meet her, or do you have any anything interesting to tell us about her specifically? Um, so no, I never actually like met her. I never like sat down and had a conversation with her. I didn't like interview her like you did. Um, so I don't really know her um, other than stories from Joe and the others. I have seen her um, off the zoo. Um, I had gone down to Florida to Big Cat Rescue at one point in time. I have, like, seen her, but I haven't actually, like, talked to her. So I don't know her. From my impressions okay. of her, um, from Joe and also seeing her and how she works and whatnot, she's a very scary woman. Yeah, so I don't yeah, know if she'd be that. the nicest person in the world, but... Yeah, I mean, I get yeah. that from, the, from what they show. I mean, I, I don't, again... I know I remember that I interviewed her. I don't I'm sure it was a fine interview because I'm sure it was just a fluff piece. So she was probably as the nicest as nice as you can be. But, you know, I mm-hmm. I remember being in that place. It it didn't feel like a normal zoo. It felt strange. Like I I was like, what is this? You know, and I remember they were really strict about what we can do and where we could go and I just it didn't feel you know, it didn't feel like, you know, I don't know if you're familiar with Lori Park Zoo, which is a that's the zoo in our area aside from Bush Gardens. But, you know, when you go to Lori Park Zoo, it's um, not, you know, they, they, they don't tell you, oh, you can't go to that part of the park, you know, unless it's like the employee, you know, but, but that's obvious. It says employee area. So you know not to go there, but yeah. they don't tell you, like, you, you see penguins, they don't tell you, well, don't go where the penguins are, you know, and, and good Lord, who wouldn't want to mm-hmm. go where the freaking penguins are? So now I'm curious, when you said you saw her, so did you go with him when he did his um, roadside protest near Big Cat Rescue. Or did you go there with him? No, that was that was after I left the zoo. Oh, that um, was I after you left. Out. Okay, okay, okay. I just uh, oh yeah. my gosh. And, and do you have a, an opinion, by the way, about? And I swear this is the last question I'll ask you about her. Do you have an opinion about her husband, like uh, her ex dead husband? Do you think that uh, some people say that she she's the one that killed him, and others saying they don't know? Do, do you have any opinions on that? It's okay if you don't. So um, I'm actually kind of glad you brought that up. Um, so as for whether she killed him, I'm pretty certain. I think everybody is. Um, the funniest bit about all of this, this whole mess is the fact that Joe technically won from behind bars, which is insane. Um, I don't know if you've been following the news and whatnot, what's going on with her, but she has a closed Big Cat Rescue due to all the hate that is going on from the docuseries. Um, the only way they are getting uh, fed, from what I understand, is through her estate, right? Mm-hmm. So they just found out that she forged the will. Um, they don't have proof yeah, of her, but that. somebody had forged it. So uh, the daughter of, uh, what's his name, Don Lewis, the, that person that was actually supposed to get the, the estate, um, she's suing Carol, and it's pretty much going to be an open, closed case. So she's going to lose the estate, which means that um, she's going to end up losing the zoo. And although she owns Joe's zoo now, she's going to end up losing that. Um, I was going to ask about that. Yeah, anymore. Jeff doesn't right. own the zoo anymore, so he, the only way, supposedly, he's opening up another zoo over by the Oklahoma Texas border. But the truth well, matter I, is, in yeah. the uh, the lawsuit, um, Carol owns all the vehicles on the park now. And I don't know if she owns them right now or if it's in the the 120 days, which is about four months. Um, but the truth of the matter is, it is nearly impossible to move. 210 tigers and 80 other animals in only four months, especially when you don't have money. Right. So that zoo might get some animals, but it's, it's not going to be the same zoo. So Joe won. He got what he wanted. That's, that's curious. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah, it is insane. I mean, I saw that story about her owning his zoo and I thought, oh, my God, it finally happened. But now hearing what you said, I mean, yeah, she if she's going to lose it because of that, that would definitely mean that he that he won. So, I mean, let me ask you this. I mean, now that you said that, I mean, you, you know, you talk about the way he is. I mean, would I don't know how to I don't know if there's a way I can let me see if I can ask this question without is would you be happy for him if that were to happen like knowing that she if she just completely loses her 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 zoo and loses his zoo how would that make you feel as somebody who worked for joe 
and knowing how he treated people, how would that make you feel? Um, so that's that's going to be kind of an interesting one to answer. Um, knowing Joe, honestly, I wouldn't care. But if it was – since I followed the story since, you know, for five years now, um, I have a lot of respect for the fact that he was able to do that. Granted, it was all accidental, but um, – it's it's one of those weird coincidences where everything kind of just fell into place. Um, I'm happy that technically he did win, um, simply because Carol did start this. She started the war by um, uh, going after Joe, and then mm-hmm. Joe kind of took the fall for it because Joe was being a dumbass. Um, but the fact that she was able to write his name, even though he didn't really write his name, he got he got his fame that he wanted, and now Carol is out of the picture. She lost the zoo. It's, it's one of those karma is, is a bitch. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's it funny is. to watch that happen. And maybe karma's name is Carol Baskin. Who knows? We don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> you never know. Um, well, let me, let me ask you this. You know, if you, in the very unlikely, maybe in a parallel dimension, if Joe were to be listening to this interview, would, what, what mm-hmm. would there be something that you would like to say to him? Or something that maybe you think he needs to hear, and and you know what, I know that this that all kinds of ages listen to this, but man, if you want to let it fly with the expletives, let it fly with the expletives. It's okay. <laughs> uh, no, I, I don't have a whole lot to say. The only thing I would say is take the win and and just kind of take be at peace. You you technically did win, um, although it's not quite how he wanted to to everything to kind of come out. Um, right. He got what he wanted. I would say leave it there and try and don't don't keep uh, pushing the bear. Oh boy, you know you know that. Do you think he'll ever get out? Like before his time is up, do you think he'll ever be be, be let no. let go? No, you don't think so. Wow. Uh, no, he's got a 22 year sentence. And here's the thing: uh, I know there's a lot of people that are trying to get him pardoned, um, which I don't think that's going to happen. Um, but even if he got a retrial, right? Let's say they got rid of the whole murder for hire thing, because he was probably set up. I, I do believe that. Um, okay, I was about to ask about that. He would still be sitting the same exact amount of time right now um, because he's in jail because he sold tigers illegally and he's um, murdered um, at least five that they found, but there's supposedly 50 of them that are at least buried in that backyard. Um, Right. So he would still be spending the same amount of time in jail. So, no, um, it's going to be a death sentence for him. He's an old guy. He's got some health problems. Um, He's probably going to die there. Um, and even wow. if none of this happened, he would still find a way to get in jail. He did so many illegal things that should have never happen, but here we are. And what, now that you said that, um, what is your opinion about what happened to that building that burned down? Do you think he um, did that, or do you think CEO, somebody else did that? I honestly didn't even think about it until after the documentary came out. Um, he always blamed Rick Kirkman and Carol Baskin hiring Rick Kirkman and this whole crazy story, and um, from everything that, that I've seen there, I, I could 100% believe it. Um, mm-hmm. But after watching the documentary, um, actually sitting down and watching his, his footage, um, if, you, if you go back and watch the, the episode that he did on, the, on his uh, TV series about the whole GoFundMe for the new studio, he's tweaking. Mm-hmm. It looks exactly like he's tweaking. Um, so, yeah, I 100% believe he did it. And, and I'm sorry, just, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an old guy. I may not know the word. When you say tweaking, does that mean taking meth? Yeah, he's he's a uh, high on meth and he's a uh, jittery and um, he he's just high. Now, see, I'm I'm glad you said that because when you were mentioning before about you know signs that somebody's on meth, I always thought that was just a uh, like a, a twitch, like you know people that have autism have. I didn't know that that's because of the drugs he did. I didn't know that. That's that's very very uh eye opening and I'm I know guys, I know some of you out there are laughing at me like, "Hey, how did you not know that?" Well, what do you you know, it's not like I hang around people that do meth, guys. Come on. Anyway, so let me ask you this. Uh, this is going to be <laughs> an interesting is there um uh if you can, if you can, uh one of the fans are asking um in the chat what would be the weirdest thing that you saw when you were working for him? And I know that's a loaded question, but you know, oh. I, I know I, I'm like, I don't know if there's one thing that he could say. There's so many weird things, but you know, if you want to say a couple of things, that's fine. But if you could name something that you saw that was just like really out there and like, you know what? I know I'm working for a guy 
that works with Tigers for a living, but even for this, this is weird. What would that be? Okay, so before I go further with the story, um, this person was not in the docuseries. Um, this was someone completely different. So okay. before anybody starts pointing names and whatnot, um, there was a um, trans person that had worked at the zoo. Okay. And um, it was one of those types of things where you wouldn't even know they were trans. She was originally a female. Um, and she started wearing a, uh, a strap-on dildo um, while she was working because that's what she wanted. Um, she, she thought that she, who, that's who she was, you know, more power to you. Now, the issue was, there's two issues. One, the thing was massive. It was like a giant elephant dong. And two, um, she works, she helped bring in the, the dead animals to, to the, uh, the zoo. So, like, we'd get calls from farmers where um, they'd have, like, a horse or a cow that would die. And we'd have to go pick it up, and then we'd feed it. We'd butcher it and feed it to the animals, right? Mm-hmm. Well, anyways, I don't know. You think the first time you'd kind of get an idea not to do this, but for whatever reason, it didn't quite click. Um, while you're moving around and doing stuff, you, you're moving around a lot when you're picking up those animals and moving them. And so, right. um, this is in Oklahoma, which is kind of a, uh, a more kind of conservative kind of a, a state. You know, we don't have issues with gays. So there's a lot of uh, older people that that. They're not quite okay with it just yet, and the LGBTQ and kind of all of that kind of fun stuff. Um, well, mm-hmm. anyways, as she or this person is moving uh, the cow, um, the, uh, the the dildo came off and, and it would fall oh. on the ground, and, and you just see this farmer who's looking at this person being like, oh. "What the hell just happened?" And then of course, oh, my all God. the embarrassment that's going on there, right? Oh, and so you would. You would think after the first time you would you'd either secure it a little better or, or something, but apparently they didn't quite get that kind of memo. So um, yeah, it ended up happening just about every time that that she would. Did did yeah. they pick it up? I mean, did somebody pick it up, or did they just leave it there? I mean, it was this awkward moment where you know you're just standing there and you're like, oh crap, this has actually happened. No one's saying anything, and the farmer's just like, what did I just see? And they're trying to what? be like, trying to play off cool. So eventually, you know, she'd pick it up and then she'd like put it in her pocket or something or other, and then you know, fix it whenever they get, she got back to the zoo or something or other. But yeah, no, it happened repeatedly. Wow, I don't think I can say anything. Wow, now that is a weird thing to happen. Okay, okay then. Yeah. I mean, I was expecting like the cow eats it or something. I don't know. <laughs> like, oh, okay, there's a snack for me. <laughs> Who knows? Oh my god. Wow. Well, um, wow, Jack, we, we're getting close to the end here. Um, is there anything that you would like to add that maybe we didn't cover? Anything that you want people to know uh, going into your book that, that might interest them? Uh, so uh, the book, um, it comes out June 15th, so it's like five days away. Um, and coming out in yeah. the book right now, we do have a paperback, a hardback, and we're going to actually have a dust cover uh, version coming out as well. Ooh, nice. We don't have a date for that just yet, but due to um, COVID, kind of the printing's kind of a little iffy right now, so we still have to get proofs and whatnot. So um, if you want to kind of follow up on that, you need to go to my website or at jackwarrenbooks.net and get some information on that. Um, the book, we actually going to have two versions of it. We're going to have a censored and an explicit version. Um, the explicit is... Um, Mostly, um, it's it's all um, there's a lot of swearing going on. That's how we cope with things, and of course, it's also Joe. Everything came out of his mouth with a swear word. So if you're right. sensitive to that, stick with the censored version. Um, we're gonna have a censored uh, um, ebook, and we're also gonna have a paperback and all that fun jazz with that as well. Um, so that's that's smart. That's smart. It that's follows. Smart, yeah. um, it, it follows my story from whenever I got the the interview all the way to the day I left. It's written as a stylized novel instead of like a whole memoir slash autobiography kind of thing to give it kind of a more interesting yeah, I noticed. kind of read. Right, yeah, I saw that. I was going to ask you about that earlier. I guess I, I didn't, I'm sorry I didn't do that. So it, it's it's not necessarily like a, re, it, it's not written like a reality s- series kind of thing. It's actually written like a, a character going through what you went through. Mm-hmm. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Um, it is about 99.7% factual. The only difference is, is some name changes and um, some different details to kind of protect people's identities. Um, right. But every single story that's in there, that, that 100% happened, um, it 
you're going to hear read stories about uh, we had a racist goose all the way up to there was a gunman that came into Zooters to which is the pizza place um, to uh, the time I walked into my trailer and found three million dollars in cash sitting on my table. So all kinds of crazy stuff. And then there's a lot of the stories that we even talked about today are in that book, and it kind of goes into a lot more detail. Okay, I'm sorry. You just mentioned a racist goose. I know this is sidetracking, but I got to know about this. What is with the racist yeah, goose? We had a racist <laughs> goose, so we had a lot of animals what? that uh, – uh, birds that we'd leave on the park out of cages so that way they'd eat, like, the bugs and stuff. And, they, you know, they didn't hurt any of the – I mean, they're birds. What are they going to do? Um, one of those birds was a goose. I believe his name was Harold, um, and he was very racist. Um, we had a uh, one of our one of my coworkers. He was he was a black guy, um, and this goose absolutely hated him. Anytime he would try to go into the studio, he was always hanging out by the studio. Oh, he would chase God. the guy around the zoo. What? And just him? He would stay there and he'd wait for him. It, it was great. So I mean, was there any? So there, there was nobody else that he would go after. I mean, if we had like a. a you know, like uh, customers that came in that were that were black or darker skin. You know, he'd be upset with them, but he wouldn't really chase what? them around the zoo like he would with the uh, the coworker. Yeah. Oh my gosh! What is with this goose, dude? Yeah, we also had uh, parents that came from gangsters, and they would call um, uh, customers coming up to them. They they would uh, uh, say some very uh, racist and interesting kind of slurs and whatnot to them. Right, right. Yeah. They so had some very Whoa. interesting animals. Uh, it sounds like it. Holy cow. I, oh, my God. Wow, I am so glad I asked that question. <laughs> okay. Well, look, okay, so then what's the name of the website people can go to? So, I mean, can they get it on Amazon, or do they have to go to a specific website for your book? Uh, so, we're actually going to have it. Uh, the ebooks can be published on all the ebook platforms. We're going to have it on Amazon. We're going to have it on Barnes & Noble, iBooks, um, Google Play, all the big ones, and uh, a few of the smaller ones as well. Um, it's called okay. I Saw a Tiger. Um, and you can actually pre-order, pre-order it right now through Barnes & Noble. Um, and like I said, on day of release, it's going to be on all these different platforms. Um, the uh, paperback, we're going to actually be releasing that everywhere. Um, you're going to be able to pick it up at uh, um, a library if you don't want to pay money for it. Um, it's going to be distributed there. Um, it's going to be hitting up uh, bookstores. You can ask them to um, order it, and they can get it for you. And so it should be a pretty Great. easy uh, find to read. Awesome, awesome. Now, I know with the COVID, it's, it's – questionable to do book signings but if you guys ever if you do decide to do those and in the very unlikely event that you decide to do a book signing down here in tampa please do let me know and i'll, I'll advertise the heck out of it so you got a lot of people coming by we'll do yeah sounds great yeah awesome jack thanks again for coming by it was one hell of i had a great time man thanks so much and um I, you know i'm sorry we didn't have anybody calling in but we did have that one question on chat mostly there were like reacting like oh my god i can't believe it so <laughs> i'm sure they'll be sharing the interview so thanks a lot jack you take care of yourself my friend and i hope to talk to you again sometime soon thanks for having me thank you thank you all right so guys that was jack warren author of upcoming book i saw a tiger so we do still uh, we're going to take a very quick break when we come back i do have a couple of stories that i want to share with you pop pop, pop culture stories So just hang in there, and uh, we will be right back. Put your warm feet on hold, Graveyard Shift fan. Our illustrious host, Emmy. Why the hell does he always say that word, illustrious? We'll be right back after this break with more shifty, yeah, like shitty, awesomeness. I can't believe this guy. Who the hell does he think he is? Um, oh, okay. Um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll be right back. You're listening to the Graveyard Ship Talk Show with me. If you want to call in, you can. You can call in at area code 516-595-8313. That's 516-595-8313. Emmy, we'll be right back. Let them roam their land Then stand back and marvel What a beautiful cat Cause I saw a tiger Now I understand I saw a tiger Tiger saw a man I can give him a home Law 
Live from a war-torn battlefield, from atop a 200-foot-tall, last-of-its-kind woolly mammoth, driving a bunch of drunk zombies on their way to an all-you-can-eat super flesh buffet. Teaching a cat how to speak fluent Klingon. You're listening to the Graveyard Shift online radio talk show. And now, just finished from sucker-punching your country's ruthless dictator, because he's just that damn cool. Here's your illustrious host. Emmy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Graveyard Shift Talk Show. This is your host, Emmy. And, you know, before we go any further, um, I just want to say that I hope you guys know that here at the Graveyard Shift Talk Show, we do not tolerate intolerance. And I want you to know that we are absolutely 100,000% in support of all those of you out there that are protesting um, against the murder of George Floyd and are protesting for very real sweeping change in law enforcement nationwide. And, you know, I hope that we do see real change because it really needs to happen, guys. It needs to happen now. So moving, speaking of change in the entertainment world, it looks like film and TV production has been given the green light to restart in L.A. County. Now, this news comes as a part of the announcement of the reopening of a bunch of locations in the California city. L.A. County Public Health Director Barbara Ferrer had some public comments about the decision. Now, the announcement was made and streamed online for the public to see as well. Press was on hand to ask some questions about the logistics concerning the scale of such a move. Now, of course, there's going to be a lot of uh, moving parts to this, uh, this, uh, this, this green lighting. And, you know, uh, we're looking at, you know, reopening things like the, 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 the gyms, museums, day camps, pools, zoos, professional sports arenas without fans in attendance. And uh, those are all allowed to reopen this Friday. Now, Ferrer stressed that this is a collective effort and it has to be held upheld by everyone. Quoted as saying, I feel confident this is a community effort. We're all in this together. We all want sectors to reopen. We're desperate to make sure people can get back to their jobs. We just need to do it in a way that adheres to the modifications. So I guess we'll find out more about that as it happens but i know our friends that are in film making over there are really happy i know here in florida man we wish who i mean we really need a lot i mean things have been actually been improving in in uh production i was booked in a commercial not that long ago so i'm really happy about that and hopefully we can get more films done here in tampa and they don't have to go and do it in atlanta and a fake ebor up there i mean i'm sorry but that's true if you don't believe me look it up fake ebor in georgia i think it's in atlanta i'm not sure where it is all right so you i'm sure have heard of the story of the hbo max deciding to temporarily remove gone with the wind well that's not the only movie they're removing batman wonder woman justice league are all leaving hbo max in july additionally What has also been confirmed is the Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice, Suicide Squad, Batman Returns, Batman Forever, Batman and Robin, Catwoman, Jonah Hex, and The Losers. I can tell you right now, the one that I really don't care about leaving is Catwoman, Jonah Hex, and The Losers. Everything else, why? Well, unfortunately, it was not immediately clear why the films will are leaving, but um, the, they will only be available for the first month of the new streaming services launch, and nobody knows when they might return. Now, don't fear. They do have a collection of DC movies that will rotate on the platform. A new batch is coming in July, and then another one is coming in August. Now, the batch that is right on right now will be returning. More recent titles like Aquaman, Shazam, Joker, and previous titles like Green Lantern and Supergirl will remain on the platform. Now, this news, if you know, it comes on the heels after the surprise announcement that Zack Snyder's cut of Justice League, it exists and will finally see the light of day on HBO Max in 2021. So that should be interesting. 
Now, getting back to what I was mentioning about Gone with the Wind. Now, this has been going through a lot of heated debate. Um, it's everybody knows what this movie is. I mean, it's it's one of the most classic films of and most highest grossing films of all time. It's actually the highest grossing movie of all time if you adjust for inflation. But unfortunately, you cannot stream the movie on HBO Max at least for now. The way that they quoted, uh, there's an HBO Max spokesperson that uh, sent out a note to all media. Gone with the Wind is a product of its time and depicts some of the ethnic and racial prejudices that have unfortunately become commonplace in American society. These racist depictions were wrong then and are wrong today, and we felt that to keep this title up without an explanation and a denouncement of those depictions would be irresponsible. These depictions are certainly counter to Warner Media's values. So when we return the film to HBO Max, it will return with a discussion of its historical context and a denouncement of those very depictions, but will be presented as it was originally created because to do otherwise would be the same as claiming those prejudices never existed. If we are to create a more just, equitable, and inclusive future, we must first acknowledge and understand our history. And you know what? I do agree with that, okay? Now, I just want to clear up something. They're not getting away with getting rid of it for good. It's just what they – I think they're going to do one of two things. They're either going to put a little disclaimer in the front, which some movies already have that. If you can Amazon, I'm sure you can find I, – I don't remember which one's off the top of my head, guys. I'm, I, in fact, I think Gone with the Wind might be one of them on there on Amazon Prime if it's still there. I don't know if they did the same thing. But – um, you know, they have a little disclaimer basically stating what I just quoted. They'll either do that or they might do a, 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 a video, a short video roundtable discussion of the movie before they, they actually show it. Either way, I'm okay with it because, yeah, we need to say that what you see in this movie is not okay. Um, and by the way, um, the way that they treated both of the – the black actresses in that film is uh, irreprehensible. Um, I know Hattie McDaniel that they gave her an honorary Oscar or they gave her an award. I forget. I don't know if it was an Oscar, but they gave her, I, no, I think she did win an Oscar, but anyway, th- she wasn't exactly treated the way that the other white actors and actresses were treated. And, um, you know, I don't want to say what I think the name of the other black actress was, um, uh, but the younger one that, that I forget her name, but Oh, please forgive me. Sorry. But anyway, she was also not treated that well either by the, by the, you know, in the sense that she wasn't treated the same way that the other cast members were treated. And that's just something that's been a long understanding thing that people just knew in the industry. And it just happened for a long time. And, you know, let's face it that if you've seen that movie, Hattie McDaniel makes that movie. I mean, she is the star, in my opinion, of that movie. Yes, Vivian Lee and Clark Gable are great, but come on, she makes that movie. Now, we don't have time to go over the rest of the stories, guys, but there you have it for the day. I want to thank you for listening to my interview with Jack Warren. I hope you can get his book. Remember, it can be purchased at most bookstores online, Amazon and Barnes & Noble on the, on the 15th of June. And we want to thank Jack for coming on by. So thanks for listening, guys. This is Emmy of the Great Redshift Talk Show. Get me out of here, nuclears. 